And I was very much intrigued and, and I wanted to know the facts on how are those stats in comparison to the percentage of people who just die every year uh, from the flu, from let's say just even flu A and flu B? And, and, and why is this scarier if it even is? The vast majority of people who get this are going to recover. They're going to feel achy and fluey for a couple of days and want a low-grade fever, sore throat. They know they've got a viral infection. And then it passes. And um, so those may drag on for a week or two, but they get through it. And the good news is if it's like all the other viral infections, the person will then be immune. Uh, and so each person who gets it and gets through the other side, uh, there is one less place for the virus to set up housekeeping. And this is how immunity spreads through the population and how epidemics go away. So uh, the folks who get it and, uh, and get through it uh, are the basis for this whole thing fading away. And here's where, uh, unless you're... This is a respiratory virus. Um, it comes in, it's, but it's not a classic pneumonia-causing virus where the bronchial tubes get all mucousy and thick and a uh, person gets a classic pneumonia. Uh, this rides in through the bloodstream and the lymphatics, which is one reason they say, don't touch your, your eyes or, or your mouth. What, what happens is that um, it, the virus does wind up in the lungs eventually. People cough into their hands, say, and then they grab a doorknob and transfer the virus to the doorknob and someone comes a few minutes later, grabs the doorknob, gets it on their hands and then rubs their eye. And the virus will get into the bloodstream, into lymphatic channels, ride through the bloodstream and come in through the connective tissue of the lung around the, the cartilage and the, and the fibrous scaffolding uh, that holds the lung shape. And uh, it, it's not a classic inhaled uh, uh, pneumonia type virus in that way. Uh, and so most folks, uh, especially if you're young, uh, you know, your lungs get a little sore for a few days, but then and you cough, uh, but then it goes away. It hasn't really compromised your ability to breathe, etc. cetera. Um, the problem is in about 20% of folks, as the, as the connective tissue of the lung gets inflamed uh, and swollen and edematous with fluid, uh, it gets stiffer. And so it's just hard to mechanically move those lungs in and out because the scaffolding is stiffer. And uh, so young people don't have a big problem with this, but if you are an old person, say, uh, with congestive heart failure and your lungs are all full of blood and stiff anyway, uh, this will certainly uh, tip you over into trouble. Uh, the folks with emphysema and, uh, and, and asthma who have stiff, uh, damaged lungs, uh, this can really put them in trouble. If you're diabetic and your blood's full of sugar, uh, it's harder for your white blood cells to, you know, to combat the germs. And so the diabetic folks can wind up with problems. The older folks, and especially the very, very frail ones, they're the ones as their lungs get stiffer are going to, are going to suffer the worst from this. So um, it, it's no joke, but you're right. Uh, the more people do die of influenza. Uh, this thing is so contagious and people can get so sick so fast that they wind up in the emergency room, they wind up in the intensive care unit, and it has the potential for thousands of people with these stiff inflamed lungs piling up in the halls of the, uh, of the hospitals because there aren't enough ventilators and, and ICU beds for them. That's the real horror specter here. Now, but the individual infection itself, you're right, most people are going to get through it and, and it's not going to alter their lives terribly at all. It's going to alter our economy, as it certainly is. Uh, but as, as viruses go, they're, they're, we've seen worse ones and there will be worse ones, unfortunately. What about smokers, both cigarettes and marijuana? Uh, young people who smoke. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the the battle that gets waged in the connective tissue of the lung there, you need healthy lymphocytes, you need healthy uh, mucus, uh, you need uh, healthy antibodies, and all that requires healthy lung tissues. And, and inhaling hot smoke of any kind, uh, so tobacco smoke, marijuana smoke, etc. Well, it causes a burn. It causes a low-grade thermal burn, and now your body's busy trying to heal um, burnt lung tissue on the inner lining of the lung. Uh, it's not going to be very efficient in making antibodies against viruses. It's, it's, it's working full time to repair this burn you keep inflicting. So, uh, no, uh, you're absolutely right. The smokers, including the cannabis smokers, uh, wouldn't be surprised if they wind up uh, in respiratory stress because they kind of set the stage for that with their with their inhaling of the hot smoke 
So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.